So today we have Dr. Sinclair with us. Um, she helped contribute on the first chapter related to evidence-based practices in special education. So Dr. Sinclair, I'll let you introduce yourself. Okay. Hi, everybody. My name is Tracy Sinclair, and I am an assistant clinical professor at the University of Connecticut. Uh, this is my first year as a professor, and um, I finished my PhD at the University of Oklahoma studying applied behavior analysis and transition in particular. And while I was there, um, I became very involved in the teacher prep program. And that is something that's really important to me. And that is part of what my job is here at the University of Connecticut as well. So I'm currently teaching two courses in assessment and then also involved in the teacher prep program, particularly with ed TPA in the preparation for that assessment. And so evidence-based practices to me are kind of at the root of what special ed teachers need to do. And so that's why I, I was happy to contribute to this chapter. And I feel like uh, finding ways to infuse those high leverage practices from CEC, evidence-based practices that are put out there by um, what works clearinghouse are super important for teachers to get their hands on. Great, okay, so we'll just start off. Um, how did you first become involved in research? Um, I think, you know, when I, when I was thinking about this question, I think it really rooted, or it started, I guess, the roots of it started um, in the classroom when I started, started teaching special education. And I think I'm naturally a pretty inquisitive person. And so as we started to do different projects in the classroom and implement different programs, I started to think, how, how can we find ways to show that this works? And so I think I, I kind of came into research from the action research perspective as a practicing teacher. And in my master's program, I got more involved in that and, and really liked posing the question, finding a solution and finding ways to address it. And then having that data to show how the outcomes did improve. So I think that's really where I started. And then during my PhD program, just getting involved in different projects and, and learning the different methodologies was super important to me. And uh, so that's kind of how the methodology developed for me. And I, I particularly enjoy single case research uh, because as I'm also a BCBA, and so I really like those observable behaviors that we can tackle in the classroom. Great. Um, okay, so the next question I have is what are what are some of the challenges in disseminating research and education and I'm sure you've seen this on a pre service teacher prep program side, as well as in service professional development. Yeah, and I also think as a teacher in the classroom for a long time. It's such a challenge to keep up with what is being put out there by researchers. So I think I think it's kind of a a multi-step challenge, but I think the first challenge is teachers don't have the time to search for research to support what they're doing in their classroom and then read it. And sometimes research can be intimidating for teachers in the classroom to read. Uh, there's the paywall barrier. Oftentimes school districts don't pay for journal subscriptions. So if the teacher's not committed to being part of an organization for, for whatever reasons, but usually financial, it's they can't get their hands on the research, which I think is one of the biggest challenges that we have. Um, I also think that teachers sometimes are constrained by the district requirements of what they're going to do in their classroom. And so the district comes down with an initiative, but doesn't always explain where that came from. So I think I think as researchers, what we can do is we can reach out at the district level to make sure that we make our research accessible to support the programs we want to implement in the schools that we're working with. I also think as researchers, we can try to be more um, proactive and being creative in how to get our research out there in ways that don't involve a paywall. And I think, I think some groups uh, are doing a really great job of that. I know some subdivisions of CEC are trying to kind of put out little snippets on social media, which I think is a great strategy to try to to entice teachers to learn more. And at the very least, they'll maybe reach out to the, the author and say, hey, I'm really interested in this. And as researchers, we're more than willing to talk to teachers about implementing programs. But I really think, I think first of all, for teachers, it's a time issue. And then second to that, I think it's a financial issue, definitely. Yeah, it's, it, it's really interesting some of the things you mentioned. Um, there actually was a paper that just came out um, by some people from Florida State 
um, UVA, and then Nadine Gab. I think she's affiliated with Harvard, but don't quote me on that. Um, and I'll post a link of that with this video, but they were talking about building a, uh, a team with different levels of expertise to engage in that translation of research to practice. And it was, it was walking through a lot of what you just spoke about, which is cool. Um, That's okay. Great. Uh, what advice do you have for people, new graduate students who are wanting to get involved in research? Um, I, think, I think this is my favorite question to answer because I'm so fresh out of my program. Um, I think one of the biggest things you can do as a beginning researcher is be willing to put yourself out there. And, and when I say that, I mean in multiple ways. So we're encouraged to go to conferences. And I think putting yourself out there in the sense of reaching out to a conference presenter um, and saying, hey, I'm really interested in your line of research. It connects to my line of research in this way. And, and try to build those networking relationships so you can kind of build collaboration because especially in today with so much technology, you don't have to be physically at the same university to run a collaborative study. Um, and I think COVID has taught us that even more that we can be anywhere in the world and we can collaborate with our colleagues and be productive. Um, and also put yourself out there in the sense of be willing to submit proposals. Um, in particular, I think for graduate students, especially new graduate students, Poster presentations are an excellent way for you to practice talking about your line of research, practice talking to others in an informal way, and also be comfortable with the methodology. Because I think as, as beginning grad students, we're always nervous about talking about our methods, but I think poster presentations in particular are the, an excellent way to get out there and to interact with your audience. Um, conference presentations, those hour-long question and answer ones, I think are great too, but I really think from a research perspective, poster presentations are an excellent way to go. Um, and then second to that, when you're, when you're presenting your poster, when it's not your hour of time to present, walk around, see what other students are doing, what other colleagues are doing, ask questions. Even if it seems intimidating and you don't understand the study, ask them to explain it to you. And, and then you learn from your peers and your colleagues and you become more comfortable having those kind of academic based conversations versus, oh, this is how it works in the classroom, but we wanna see kind of the research behind how it works in the classroom. So I think those are really um, great things to do. Um, I also think putting yourself out there, it's important to apply for mini grants. There's lots and lots of great grant opportunities out there and you may not get them every time. The first time I applied for a mini grant, I wasn't accepted. And I learned from that, I got some good feedback. The next year I applied and I was accepted. And so put yourself out there and be willing to um, participate in poster competitions, um, mini grant applications. And the more that you put yourself out there, the more you're gonna be comfortable talking about what you want to pursue in your line of research. And I also think um, graduate students have lots of really great ideas. And I think I, I, I suffer from that. I still suffer from that. I have, I have lots of ideas of what I want to pursue. And I think it's important to kind of keep a running log of ideas that you have and then kind of create some tree branches off of that to say, okay, I, I'm really interested in, for example, um, math instruction. And I know Corey, a colleague of mine, is also interested in math instruction. So maybe that's something that we can collaborate on in the future and keep that running list because you have the idea and you may not have the time at the moment, but maybe you can kind of circle back to it and do it later on in your career. Thank you so much, Dr. Sinclair. This was Absolutely. great. Yeah, thank you.